Okay, this is Dyson. This is one of the entries into Deceptionville, which is the first challenge of the Hammer Cup 2022, hosted on runthinkshootlive.com in association with Map Labs. So, as you saw, there was that block of text at the start that was telling us how this is the story of how Gordon Freeman saved the town, I believe. Something like that. Okay, it was worth trying that. I just I just thought I'd try that to see what would happen. This might be one of these alternative you know, or maps with alternative ways to to play it. I guess we came from this ship. Is this like a space colony? We shall see. Obviously a lot of kind of dev textures. Very simplistic. Again, I think there was like a nine day time limit on this vill. So obviously it's kind of um, smart to be a bit more imaginative by making more minimalistic, simplistic levels. And I think the aesthetic of the dev textured maps can actually give a lot of character to a level. You'd think it would be the other way about. It, you know, you'd lose a lot of the character, but it actually gives uh, gives the some levels a lot of character. I think there might have been a vill all about dev textured levels or, you know, block out levels. But that was a couple of years ago now. I'll maybe go back and play this again at the end to see. Because obviously you miss stuff on your first playthrough like for example what we were doing by pulling that lever it's obviously not very clear as to what we were doing but obviously this was uh, all part of it and we could have you know looked out and seen it's a very open level so we, we can see where we started you know this was the part where we you know shot the two vortigaunts at the start And we can see where we're, I presume, going to go. It's like they're moonwalking in or something. Oh, and of course it conveniently breaks when, uh, when we no longer need it. Right. So, I have to confess that wasn't as good as I think it could have been. I think this whole setup with using a mounted gun, you know, a mounted machine gun against Vortigaunts was uh, one of these things that was used in Half-Life and was really well utilised. Now obviously the Vortigaunts are very different in Half-Life 2 in that they're not your enemy so they weren't designed to be fought against. Um, and what they, you know, what they were doing there is they were just rushing in and because they, the space is so small the, it wasn't like you had to like aim you know over here or over here you, I could basically just aim right down the centre of this hallway and that lost a lot of its kind of fun you know if it was 
a much wider area and this map might do this later on but if it was much wider area then it would have been a lot more fun a lot more enjoyable a lot more rewarding for the player but we'll see maybe it'll do something like it later i always say i always suggest stuff and then it happens to show up later on so we got a key which opened that door for some reason upon picking up the key which doesn't really make sense Uriah that was the uh, that was Magnuson's Vortigaunt I think it's been so long since I've played episode 2 Like, almost everything is made out of just standard brushes. Almost everything, but not the, not the table, of course. But the sink is, and the chairs. So it's kind of a mix. Here we go. So it's like changing to a more detailed detailed environment which I think is a kind of a very good interesting thing to, to have. It's like the first level of or you know the first level that was included in Liberationville um, that was you had to fight citizens Gordon. in that now we have some demonic happenings going on if you have a nervous disposition look away now which is bad for me because I do have a nervous disposition Ooh. I'm sure this is all open to interpretation. But I think I was right at the start when I said it, it was an kind of alternative ways of playing. So it's all about saving the town from the the aliens who are looting the citizens and I presume the Vorts are good you know they're not fighting us they're just Freeman. they're just hanging around but it is a very uh, distinctive tower it's kind of the main focal point of the level so you kind of can always orient yourself around it so We'll play this normally. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe the deception is that there is no good way of playing. I think that's probably what it is. There is only one way and I was deceived but let's be honest I'm pretty much deceived every single level I play. But that's good. Again all of this is speculation as uh, Tyler McVicker likes to say. I am um, I don't actually know what the creators of the levels were. Thinking when making this. So yeah, we can look out this window, pull the lever and watch as this magical bridge appears and the window smashes. And the vort stands in a wall. 
It's kind of a bit strange though how that one vart attacked. And none of the other ones are. And as I said before, just to reiterate this point, because, you know, there's nothing else to do. This would be much better if this alleyway was longer and wider. Because at the moment, I, I'm barely having to do anything. I guess there's like health here. Mm. But I don't understand why picking up the key opens the door. This is something I always, uh, I was always very kind of bothered by. Even though it's like, it doesn't make you, know, it doesn't matter. You'd think the door would just either be open, but. You, you'd think you'd pick up the key and go to the door, and the door would open. But here, you just pick up the key and the door opens. This is a minor nitpick. It's hardly the worst crime I've ever seen in a... ...level. And this area, I was going to say before, I, I like it, but it's too close quarters. And you know how I feel about close quarters combat. If done correctly, it could be... It could be quite fun, but... Otherwise, it um, it's just clunky. But it does, it does give you cover, places to go. Lots of spiral staircases, which are, is quite cool. Not clipped though, but that's a controversial subject that we shall steer clear of now. These guys just hunt you down, it's like, they don't wait for anything. And compared to the Half-Life 1 Vortigaunts, these guys fire much quickly, much quicker. And here we go with this, whatever it is, the souls of the dead or something like that. I think there's a deeper message here. I think this is like my level metaphor in which I was kind of trying to be a bit 
you know, trying to add something deeper in into it, but kind of picking up on it's fairly difficult. I think. But we'll leave that one there. Overall, interesting aesthetic with the, the dev textures. Very close quarters in terms of the combat, but not not awful. Uh, the mounted machine gun could have been could have taken place in a longer and wider alleyway. Uh, but I do think it's kind of very interesting the whole dece deception part of it. So that was Dyson, not to be confused with the vacuum cleaner manufacturer.